just want to welcome everyone to tonight's Odd Key Cafe. We got a very special guest. He's the Rondo Hatton Horror Award Artist of the Year. He's worked with Marvel, DC Comics, Upper Deck, Image, Warner Bros, Paramount, the list goes on. And he's the creator of Mark Spears Monsters. Mark, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming on. We like to keep this a little community formatted like Q&A. So at any point in time, anybody out there in the audience can come on, raise their hand, come on up and ask a question. So be thinking of those questions. But in the meantime, Mark, would you like to give maybe a, a general introduction and tell the audience a little bit about yourself for those of you of them that may not know you? Um, let's see. Well, I guess you kind of nailed everything for me <laughs> by saying everything there. Um, basically, um, I'm from Alabama, um, artist, uh, let's see, I have, uh, I like monsters a lot, superheroes, uh, I've been doing this for about, uh, 20, 22 years, 23 years now, um, that's about it that I can think of, um, <laughs> 22 years, fan of monsters from Alabama. Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm definitely going through all your Instagram and your, your horror art's pretty immaculate. So definitely well-deserved uh, award. Oh, thank um, you. And af af absolutely anybody out in the audience, go ahead and feel free to raise your hand. Come on up. I know I saw a few hands go up and down. Raul, come on up. What's going on, man? Hello. Uh... I really admire your work and um, how you give it a surrealistic, surreal thoughts, not only in the colors, but also the composition is great. I want to be a comic book artist. Um, and I want to ask you which were, which, which artists were are your inspiration? to create such a unite style. If you didn't get that, I think yeah, he asked your, your inspiration on what uh, makes you create such unique art. Like, do you have any inspirations? Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, my style is a little different now than it was when I started. Um, basically, I was doing, you know, just your pencil ink uh, colors. Uh, but, you know, so I was your normal, I guess, comic book artist kind of guy. So um, I did that. My first work that got published was um, Image Comics in 2001, uh, Ultiman. Uh, Ultiman number one, I think it was a special or something. So, uh, And you can see that was just, you know, my regular pencils back then doing that. Um, and then... I went a different uh, route to where I uh, started doing concept art after that uh, a few years later um, for like Batman stuff, uh, figurines, statues, then Marvel stuff. I started doing a, uh, there's a whole line of Marvel statues out there with my name on them that they based on my artwork. Um, so I was doing those kind of things and changing my style up a little bit because they would say, hey, we want you to color this. And I was like, uh, you know, I can color with Copics and markers, but I, I couldn't color digitally at all at that time. So I started doing, you know, playing around with that more. Um, basically, uh, I, I started evolving into the style that I have because I, I just realized so many people liked it better than my regular penciled uh, penciled and ink stuff. Um, and then I started studying, um, painters, uh, like, uh, Basil Gogos. He did all the famous monster paintings, uh, the covers. Um, and he works with a lot of, a lot of color. I mean, uh, I'm just a, basically a small portion of like the color of what he does. Um, and then, uh, I started, you know, like Alex Ross, love his stuff. Uh, but I wanted to make my stuff a little bit more, uh, I felt like it, it was too stagnant, uh, like a lot of uh, Ross's work. So I wanted to make it more a blend of the two, of like a painting, but like 
what you get with the pencil dart. So I kind of try to merge the two. And then I like color. So I said, I'm going to splash a lot of color on this stuff. And it's a weird mixture and it comes out. That's the Mark Spears style now. People go, hey, I, I can recognize your work without your name on it. So it's just, it evolves over time. Like I said, I've done this 20 something years and uh, it, it just changes. Um, but my like for inspiration of my artwork, uh, Todd McFarland was the biggest inspiration at the beginning of uh, my uh, drawing um, part. And like I said later on, you know, you just start picking up stuff. You become a mutt. You start picking up things here and there, and it just meshes. So I might look at this painter like Norman Rockwell. I love his stuff and. You start mixing all that, and it just you start spewing it out together for some reason. It's just, it's just the way it goes. But thank you for answering my, my question. Uh, thanks, all of you say is so important for me, and thanks for. Oh, you're you're welcome, and uh, keep if you're trying if you if you're not there yet, keep trying because it took me a long time. It's a it's a long road, but you can get there. Uh, I like I said, I've been you know it hasn't been all roses since uh, tw let's say 2001 when my first stuff came out. It was I got so many rejection letters. Uh, you can hear uh, Todd's story how he'll tell you you know he got hundreds of rejection letters. I did the same thing. I got so many rejection letters, people telling me I'll never make it. Uh, I had Marvel call me on the phone to tell me, you're one of the worst artists we've ever seen. Never submit to us again. And and uh, and people were like, I've never heard them calling people to tell them that. And uh, so you just, you got to have a thick skin. You've got to just keep at it and, uh, and you'll, you'll eventually get it. You're, you're going to get better. The, the more practice you do, you get better. And, uh, uh, you can do things two years from now that you can't do now. It's just, that's what happens. So just keep at it and, and you'll get there. Marvel actually called you to say that. That seems pretty unreal. Marvel, yeah, man, it's a it's it's a sad story, but uh, you know I can look it back and laugh now. But uh, it was let's see, I was uh, I don't know about eighteen, nineteen, and I had just sent in you know so many submissions to Image Comics, to Marvel Comics, DC Comics. I've been doing that because I follow the Todd McFarlane method. <laughs> if you watch Todd, he'll tell you, hey, you know, send them out till they get tired of you, right? So I was sending all those things out. And and I would get some feedback from some of them. Uh, you know, some of the editors, like there was Chris Duffy at that time was at DC Comics. I think now he's out of the comic industry. He was doing something with Nickelodeon. But he was a great guy. He wrote me back every single time, would send me pages of other artists' pencils and say, hey, study this. And he would circle things. He was just such a nice person. But there's also the total opposite of that. Some of the editors were like, they would write on them like, uh, never send me anything else again. And, you know, in pen. Well, you know, I would keep at it, though. I was thinking, well, but there's just got to be one person who will, will accept it. And uh, I just got home from uh, working a retail store one day. And my dad tells me, hey, somebody called you uh, um, for Marvel Comics. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is it. This is this is what I've been waiting on, you know, all my life. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get something here. So I go and I look at the message, and it's the editor of Hulk. And I'm like, this is you know, that's like one of my favorite. This is a dream come true. I'm I'm so excited. Um, and then uh, I called them back immediately. You know, uh, the offices were closed for the day. I got a recording said, call back tomorrow, you know, 8 a.m., they opened up or something. So I had to sleep that night, and I was sitting there going, oh, man, what, you know, what's this going to be? You know, I'm going to get to draw the Hulk. I can't believe it. Uh, this is going to be so exciting. So I barely could sleep. It's like Christmas the next day, you know. So I, I'm, I'm up. I, I call them immediately at 8 o'clock. And it was actually, for some reason, 
it wasn't it wasn't actually the person that it said it was when they called. They just called from that office. And it was actually uh, John Lewandowski, the submissions editor from for Marvel. Um, but he was using the office of uh, the Hulk editor at that time or something. So he gets on the phone and he starts telling me, he goes, look, Mark, I've got like six submissions from you in the last six months and I'm tired of it. Uh, he goes, look, your, your stuff is no good. He goes, you're, you're like 19 years old. I got 16 year olds that can draw so much better than you sending me stuff. Um, and he was, he just went on to tell me my anatomy sucks. My, uh, my storytelling's no good. Um, he said, I uh, quit drawing, <laughs> quit drawing in that McFarlane style. It sucks, you know, and all this stuff. And, uh, cause you know, that's, that's how I would draw at that time. And he was just like, this is no good. This is no good. And all this. And he goes, look, I, I just, you need to give this up. You need to go do something else for your career. You'll never get into the comic industry. And, uh, and then at the very end, though, and he could tell that he kind of shocked me. Uh, I'm like, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, at the very end, he goes, listen, wait four months or something and then send something in again. And I was like, OK, thank you. And I never sent nothing in to him ever again but because it just it shocked me too much. But I thought everybody at that time, that's what they did. But I had told that story uh, like a year later to other guys who were trying to break in the industry. And they said, you got a phone call? And I was like, yeah. And they, they were like, that's, that's just strange. He must have thought enough to call you because none, none of my friends had got a phone call at that time. So um, I'd still, I did send some more stuff in a couple of years later. Um, and not to him, though. And when I did, when, my, uh, when I won the Rondo Award, I looked him up. Uh, he had passed away. I was going to tell him, hey, you know, I finally did make it, you know, just let him know. But uh, sadly, uh, he had passed away. He, he got out of comics and was doing something else and, and passed away. So I couldn't couldn't uh, reconnect with him. Do you think if it was the uh, editor that picked up instead of the submissions art, uh, officer, there would have been something that conversation would have gone differently? I, I don't know. Looking back now. My stuff was really bad at that time. I mean, that, that's the way I, I've heard other people say it, too, is you think you're you're ready, but really you're not. But uh, And some people do get picked before they're ready, but they get molded and, and everything to where their, their stuff looks better, uh, and they get that, you know, uh, apprenticeship basically and, and then get there w within a shorter amount of time but um, I don't know my stuff was pretty bad at that time uh, what's what's interesting is let's see that was probably 96 and in within three years though I did get uh, I got hired to do that image uh, comic for Ultiman because they hired me in 99 and it didn't come out to 2001 for some reason. It's, you know, it was, you know, very cheap budget. So they probably didn't have enough money to publish it right then. And they waited two years. But um, that, uh, so I was, you know, published basically within three years of that. Um, and it, it made me work harder. Uh, you tell me, no, I'm going to, you know, figure out a way to do it anyways. So, um and then, you know, that's basically, uh, I, but it did make me a little gun shot to sending things in because I did it so much. And then I was like, wow, I'm going to tick these people off, you know, if I, if I keep doing this. But I was like, you know, but somebody out there has got to hire me for something. Um, but what the, my next big thing after I did that uh, was in 2006. So it's been about five years later. Still nothing going on after I did the Ultiman. I, I was doing uh, other kind of work. And uh, out of the blue, I was checking my spam folder uh, for something. I think like a bill or something like that. And there was a message in my spam folder about a week old. It was uh, this uh, lady uh, was saying, hey, we saw your artwork online. And we have the license to do some Marvel products. And we um, 
they gave us a whole list of artists we can use from Marvel, but we don't like any of it. But we liked your stuff. And we would love for you to uh, come on board and do this stuff with us. This is the Marvel statues. And at first I thought it was fake. And then I was like, I got to write these people back. What if they already picked another artist? And they hadn't. They were waiting on me. But I'm so happy I looked at my spam folder. Um, or that that would have went away. I wouldn't have got that. Um, and that that helped a lot because that, that's when my career really started going a little bit in the right direction because in 2006 when I got that, um, that led to uh, DC's uh, doing the Batman concept art and then working on trading card series for, for DC and then Marvel after that. And so, like I said, you got to you gotta be persistent and, and take the, you know, a lot of times they're going to tell you you're no good and, you know, get out of the industry. But, you know, if you hang around long enough, those people will be gone. Uh, oh, but, but one more thing. There was, I won't tell, I don't want to tell on people, but there was a, an editor, I'll just say an editor for Green Lantern back, back in the 90s. He hated me, hated me so much because I would send him stuff once a month. And then at that time, I, I think it was American Online. I mean, I'm, I'm predating a lot of you guys here, but back then, you know, the internet wasn't the same. But they had ch chat, room, uh, chat rooms in American Online, AOL. And I, they had a DC Comics chat room. And this guy would go on there, the editor, and would talk to people. So I would sit there and, and message him saying, hey, you know, what am I doing wrong? I want to, you know, you know, draw this and that. And he goes, what are you doing wrong? You're doing something wrong by even talking to me because you're not good enough. And I'm like, whoa. And I never sent him anything else. He basically uh, got out of the business within like five years and started doing something else. He, he's not in comics anymore. But you got to think these people, a lot of these people that are editors and stuff aren't artists, so, mo most of them. Some of them are, you know, that went from artist to being an editor. But they're, and they don't even like comics, some of them. It's like at movie studios, some people are over movies. They don't even watch the movies. They don't like movies. So you, you can't got to have a, a thick skin and, and take it with a grain of salt when they tell you you suck and you're no good and everything because uh, they could just be having a bad day or, or maybe they can't spot talent. Who knows? But don't take no for an answer. Just keep going at it. You're getting better and, and you'll get there. Yeah, it sounds like comic editors are ruthless, Raw. Thank you for the question. And yeah, keep, keep trucking. Uh, thank you, Ren and Mark. Uh, thank, for, uh, thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. And uh, anybody out there in the audience, if you're curious, there's a little hand at the bottom of your screen. You can click that and you'll raise your hand and come on up and you can actually ask a question or type out your questions in general chat. But going back to uh, earlier, yeah, comp the, the industry is not the same as it once was. How in your eyes has like technology and the advancement of like AI art and now with NFTs coming out, have you seen bit massive any changes in the comic industry on your end or is it still relatively similar to what it's been? Oh, it's, it's changing so much. Um, and, and that's one big thing I would suggest for any, anybody who wants to be in uh, an artist or, or in the field already, you have to learn to adapt um, because things change so much from when I was starting out to where things are now, just in this 20 year span. I mean, now you have the internet where, man, back then when you had to look up a reference for something, you better have had a book with like buildings and, and things in it, like a little scrapbook of all those things for reference material because you couldn't look on the internet for it. Um, so there's things like that. There, there's been able to talk to creators. Um, the only way you would be able to talk to comic creators would be at conventions. Now you can talk to them online. Uh, they can see your stuff and give you advice. Uh, that's huge. Um, the, the NFTs, uh, that's, I never saw that coming. That, that's a great, a great thing there where you can actually, uh, you know, have this digital art that you can own. Um, I love that. The AI art, um, 
I don't know. That's still, it's still early on there to see what that's going to do. Uh, I know a lot of artists are worried about it, thinking that's going to take their jobs or, or whatever, but I'm not too worried about it right now because it's, it can, it can give a voice to someone who can't really draw well, you know, and, and they're wanting to create a story and they're like, ah, I can learn this AI thing. I can learn how to to put the words in there and I can have this done in maybe an hour, right? Because you got to keep feeding it back, you know, to get exactly what you want. But it can't keep those characters and tell a story with it. it you know, it can't really do a lot of those things. It reminds me of the, the AI, um, the the bots that the uh what do you call it where it does the the, the words uh you can go and tell a, an ai script to say hey uh, write me a story doing this that's actually more impressive to me than the artwork ai because man it can come up with a whole story for you um uh, and i guess writers may be worried well that put them out of a job you know uh because that stuff's getting better every day but um Again, I think it's just tools. I, I don't think it's, um, I don't know about the AI that actually uh, steals art or something. Somebody was saying that one day, well, it's, it's taking this part from here and that part from there. I, I don't know. I don't really have nothing to say about that. I'm not, I'm not sure. But um, but the industry is really changing. Um, it's weird because uh, it's still thriving, I think, even though you don't have uh, as many people buying paper you know paper products anymore you don't have magazines and stuff like that as much uh but it, it's still going on and i think there will always be uh, room for comic books for magazines even if they're just all digital but there's something to be said about holding it in your hands uh you know you can't smell it when it's digital you know i i, I myself i love looking at digital comics because they're online i don't have to move get up and do anything but then I also like to have, I get a stack out and it's just, man, the smell, the paper, the the texture, it's just, you know, I like that too. So um, I, I do think that everything's changing to where it's getting more digital. And I work with a, a Wacom uh, Cintiq tablet, uh, it's the 32 inch one. Um, that is, I think that's where things are going more is the digital art because it, I can save so much time instead of having to sit here and draw with a piece of paper. And then I would have to scan it in. Then I'd have to color it or, or, or ink it, then color it in the computer anyways, or ink it and then color it in the computer. Uh, and then they were telling me this back in like 2006, 2008, they were saying, uh, these are companies telling me this, Hey, it would be easier if you would do this digitally for us. Um, Cause it's also, you know, I guess it's preference. I think it looks better, um, but I still, um, with my stuff, I try to have a, you know, you can actually see if you look close enough, there's like a canvas grain there. I try to still make it look like it's uh, done right in front of me on a canvas, but yet I still, I'm able to get the um, the colors the way I want. I can do it a lot faster by doing it digitally. Um, and then some people will say, I had a guy one day uh, looked at my stuff on Instagram. He was recording a video and then tagged me in it. And he's like, huh, oh, you know, he's looking at different artists for some reason. He's like, I like this guy. And then he goes to my stuff. And he goes, oh, Mark, oh, I like this. I like this. Uh, wait, he does this digitally. Uh, doesn't like it and then unfriended me or something or unfollowed me. I'm like, what? I mean, so there's bias toward digital artists for some reason, you know, like, oh, you're, you're cheating because you did it digitally. It's, you know, if it's not done with, if you don't get paint all over you, you know, but uh, to me, it's so much cheaper uh, buying Copic markers and, and paint uh, paper, all that. Uh, it's a lot cheaper going digital. Um, I can make uh, different variations, you know, with colors and stuff so much quicker, uh, edits quicker. Uh, so I, I I like it that way. Um, and people seem to respond to it and, and they're okay with it. But yeah, you do have people out there that do not like uh, digital art. And some people will say, is this done by hand or is it digital? And I say, it's done by hand digitally. 
Because, I mean, I'm not, you know, this ain't AI. I'm not sitting in there going, hey, uh, draw the clown with his minions and a cat. I, I, you know, I wish you could, I wish it was quick, that, e that, that, that easy and quick, but it's not. So, yeah, definitely digital seems a lot more convenient. Rick, what's going on, man? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Mark, man, I heard you from Alabama, man. Yeah, yeah, you sound like you got a little twang in your voice too. Where are you from? That's it. Well, look, I, I got family in uh, basically Alabaster and all that. You a Bama fan or you an Auburn fan? That's what I want to know. Well, I like winning, so I am an Alabama fan. Uh, Roll Tide. Go, go dogs, baby. Go dogs. Come on, dogs. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, you got, you got some Alabama over there and Kirby Smart, so, you know, it's, it's all right. He learned from the best, baby. That's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good, man. Well, look, I was looking at all your uh, on Instagram, and I see these uh, these monster cards and stuff like that. What made you get into all that? Well, um, that's uh, that's interesting. So basically, um, I'm doing my stuff. Uh, like I said, when I got up to doing the statues and stuff, that was around 2006, 2008. And after that, I, I just, it, it kind of like dried up. I, did, I didn't have much work. Uh, I was doing trading cards. Uh, Marvel and DC were putting me out there doing that, and they just weren't paying enough on those things. Uh, I was getting $5 to draw a sketch card, and Marvel and DC were both, hey, we want you to draw this, you know, like it's a cover. You know, we want it, you know, inked and colored and three characters on it. And I'm like, and I'm getting $5 for this. Uh, I, I did so many for DC. My hand hurt. Uh, I did 600 within a month and I, I just could barely move my arm anymore. And uh, so I was like, I got to get out of this. This is because I did it originally thinking, Hey, this is good for my resume. You know, I, I get to draw all the characters I want. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, X-Man. And then it got to where I was like, this is not fun and I'm not getting paid good. So I was, uh, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of done with sketch cards. So I quit that around 2015, maybe or 16 was my last one where I just, but through the years of there, I was like go doing one, like 15 cards for a set. I, I just got to where I just didn't want to do it. Um, and then uh, I had, for some reason I was like, um, well, actually, it started back when I was working, uh, doing my Marvel statues for Corgi. Uh, there was a company at that time, and they were like, hey, our Marvel contract's going to run out two thousand like eight, nine, and we need something uh, that we can license or something that's free. Uh, can you think of something? So I pitched to them. I did four drawings of Dracula, Mummy, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. And I said, you should do these. Uh, I said, we could do monster statues. Uh, and they were like, well, but we wanted something we didn't have to license. And I said, you don't have to license these. These are public domain. These are my ver versions of these. Uh, and they were like, huh, well, well, we'll think about it. And then they got me to do some King Arthur ones and some Robin Hood and all that kind of stuff too. But they they merged with another company and uh, – so it, it, it didn't happen. It fell through. They never did do the monster stuff. But around uh, 14, 2014 or 15, I, I got those drawings in. I was like, man, I, I really like these monsters. Uh, and then I said, I'm, what if I painted them and maybe I could get a cover doing a, a cover at a magazine? Because that was one of my goals. You know, I had like a list of things I always wanted to do. So uh, I did that. I did like a Dracula, Frankenstein, and something else, uh, maybe a Wolfman. And I started sending them around to the magazines, uh, the horror magazines at that time, and said, hey, we'd like a job doing a cover for you. Uh, and they were just as cruel <laughs> as the uh, comic guys. Uh, when when the, the whoever was doing Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine at that time, it's not the same people because it's, it's changed hands three times since then. But he wrote and said, oh, well, how did you do these? Are these digital or is this on a uh, canvas? And I said, this is digital. He never wrote back. Then there was a, a one, one guy, though, wrote and said, hey, I love it. Let's talk. 
and uh and i did did some covers for them uh, i got to draw christopher lee and some other horror related stuff at that time but uh and that was okay so you know cross something off my bucket list but uh I still had those monsters and I was like, mm, you know, man, I, I think I could really create something here, but, uh, you know, life gets in the way. I didn't have much time to do it. So I just set it, set it away. And then it was, uh, 2020 right before uh, COVID hit. So it was January, February. Uh, I was like, I, I think I'm, I'm quitting. I'm, I'm not going to do art anymore. I'm going to do something else. And I was like, what What can I do? And I was like, I was thinking of doing, a, of studying um, cybersecurity and all this other stuff. I was like, I got to I gotta do something to, and, and get out of the industry. And then uh, COVID hit, and I was like, well, you know, and I'm stuck at home and stuff. And I said, if I'm going to go out, I'm going out swinging. So I said, I'm going to do all the monsters my way. And if people like them, they like them. If they don't, at least I did it. So I started drawing stuff once a day. I had stuff uh, come out. Uh, I would put on Instagram, Facebook, and everything. And people really responded to it. They was like, I love this. And uh, then I had uh, someone reach out to me that I know that had worked at Hasbro and said, uh, Mark, this is... Um, this is amazing. You've got to do something with this. You you can't just have these 30 characters and not, you know, have a plan for them. You need to, you need to put this in something. And I said, well, maybe trading cards. That's something I could do. I, I know the trading card industry pretty good since I worked in it. And, and I said, I, I might do that. So I, I drew up some more uh, monsters and, uh, by that year, uh, we let's see, I did a Kickstarter for it that did pretty well. And then I put out a trading card series. Um, and it was the most art ever done for a trading card series by one artist. It was like 155 pieces of art it goes into that series one. Uh, and it great feedback. People loved it. Uh then everything just starts booming after that. Uh, I did another series uh, in 2022 um, that just came out uh, last October. Uh, it did great. Um, I'll probably have another one come out this year. Um, and then, but yeah, people love the monster concepts. They love the art. Uh, uh, then I got to do, after people saw that, um, the people who uh, did Spirit Halloween movie, the director reached out to me. We uh, we put some artwork in the movie. Uh, if you watch it in the kid's room, you can see my posters on his wall. You can see my trading cards on his desk. And then they uh, asked if I would do the poster, and I did the movie poster. And uh, then I even did these little concept things for the monsters, but it was after the movie was already done. So they weren't based on my concepts, but they said, hey, what? We, we just want to, to use that for like social media. So I did those. Those are out there somewhere. But um, so the monsters really just uh, saved my art career. Uh, that was uh, and then that led to uh, doing the, the spawn covers and hopefully more stuff of that down the road. But uh and I, I'm a big monster fan, and I, I love creating, and uh, and hopefully I will be doing a comic book of the monsters and stuff too to show show off my uh, storytelling skills. But well, I'm hoping you make some uh, some NFT monsters, man. Is what I'm hoping. Start popping those bad boys out, man. I've gotten some people ask me about that, and I'd love to. I just got to learn how to do this NFT stuff, man. I I spent days on it one time trying to mint something, and whew, that that this uh, couldn't figure that out, but uh, I'll get some help. I think y'all y'all know what y'all doing here, so I could probably figure it out. There you go, man. There you go. And I guess with, as far as you coming from where you started till now, I guess learning the business side of things and, and making deals and things has it got has that part gotten easier? Do you feel like now that your name is kind of you know a lot bigger now, or is it easier to kind of push your weight around as far as what you want deal wise, or is it still just as crazy? That's interesting. I think, um, yeah, it gets a little easier the the more known you get. Um, one thing that happened right when uh, right when my card set was about to be released, the first series. So uh, that was 
uh, I guess 2020. Did that come out in 20? I don't, uh, man, I'm, I'm slipping. But anyways, it was uh, right before it was released. Um, I think it was 21. Uh, in, and it was, let's see, Nacelle. If y'all know who Nacelle is, uh, y'all know the, the, the toys that made us, you know, the movies that made us, the guys that did that. Um, they uh, got in touch with me and did a licensing agreement for uh, all my original characters from the Series 1 Mark Spears Monsters trading card set. So that's why I don't really use those characters right now. Those are like Mr. Mystery uh, and a, a bunch of other ones. I think it's like 60 characters in that. And they were going to try to make a uh, TV shows, um, action figures, and all that stuff. But then they got RoboForce right afterwards. And then they got... Uh, what was that other stuff they got? Sectoid, uh, sectars, uh, and then they got something else. So, I, but yeah, mine was. We even worked it. We already did the turnarounds and everything, but mine kind of got pushed on the back burner. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen anymore now. But uh, those, you know, things like that. Um, I don't know. It, it gets a little easier. You, you know, you still have to look for work and stuff if you if you want it. What I'm trying to do is get to where uh, I have my own business to where I don't need anyone, need another company if I want to make the money I want to make. So basically, uh, I have my, my Monsters brand. I can keep doing trading cards, comic books, uh, and doing that stuff forever. And then you know, I don't have to rely on someone else. Uh, that's what I would do. And then I got my, you know, my prints and, and stuff like that, that I, that I sell, but, uh, I've never actually been to like a, a comic book convention ever in my whole entire life. So I don't have the, um, the connections. Uh, a lot of these other guys do now this year, I will be going to some cause they got the spawn covers coming out. But before then, I didn't want to go to one and have a, a table set up and people walk up and say, I have no idea who you are. Because I was like, well, what would I say? So uh, I wanted to have something, you know, in that space, you know, in, in the comics where they would go, oh, OK, you know, I know who you are then. So uh, it, it, I don't know if it gets uh, easier. Hopefully it will. Uh, and, and hopefully bigger and better things will come. The the thing is, the more known you get, the more eyes your stuff gets in front of, and it does get easier that way because you might be ready, you might be a great artist, but people, if they're not seeing it, they, they're not hiring you for this or that. Uh, so I'm hoping, you know, maybe one day I'll get uh, concept art for a movie. Uh, that would be fun. I haven't ever done that. Um, I would like to do uh, an interior uh, spawn comic, uh, something like that. That would be a, a goal. Um, and, um, you know, to see my monster stuff, you know, I, I like to tell stories and I like to create characters. So, you know, do some more of that stuff, but yeah, I don't know if it, it, it hopefully it will be getting easier. Um, but the, it does get, like I said, with the, the more fans you get and the more eye, eyeballs or get on your stuff, it it's easier that way. For sure, man. I think that's a lot of us came across you from doing you doing the spawn covers, you know, and you starting to do that art. It's like, man, who's this guy? Right. And then all of a sudden you started looking into this man. Oh, man, look at these monsters or look at these cards. And, you know, and just the more eyes you can get to you, the better. If you start doing NFTs, tons of people are into NFTs, the new, you know, the new generation. This is the way it's going. Start putting that stuff out there. And there's you another door, another eyes on you just like that. Yeah, the, the more doors you can get, that's that's the thing. Uh, that's what I'm 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 excited. The NFTs, I think I can bring in more audience members. Uh, the the thing is with um, like you said um, with the spawn stuff, it's it's putting my stuff in front of people who who never had saw it before. Uh, a lot of the monster fans already kind of knew who I was in the horror space, uh, but this is getting me out there in a bigger space. Uh, so hopefully more eyeballs will see it and and uh you know i can continue doing this the only way i can continue doing what i do is for people to like it uh and they want to purchase it purchase a print purchase trading cards or purchase the comic books 
So, you know, I'm just, I'm hoping everybody keeps continuing to, to like my work. And, and if I can put out high quality work, hopefully everything keeps going up. So, yeah. I agree, man. And I think, you know, what's crazy too. I think so many people you run across in life where they're like, they're almost about to shut the door. They're about to shut the shop and be like, okay, I'm about to do something different. I'm done. And then like, that's when the breakthrough happens. Like, it's so crazy how in life that happens. And just like you, 2019, the COVID, all this stuff happens. You're about to close. You're like, all right, I'm gonna go out swinging. This will be it. And then here you go. Your biggest breakthrough. Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, with me, it was because I I just I kept like, being a little gun shy and was like, well, I don't know, you know, I could I could work on this tonight or I can go watch this movie and all this. But when I sit there and said, look, I'm going to give this one more shot. And I was like, I'm going to, and, and you know, not uh, I actually have uh, samples of um, uh, comic pages where I was doing uh Man, I, I need to show those one day. People would probably get a kick out of them. I had them. They weren't finished, but, I mean, it was pretty tight pencils on it of, uh, what was it? I had everybody in it. I had Joker, Batman, the Hulk, and Spawn. And it was in like a four-page sample. And I, I had been perfecting that for years, these four pages, because, you know, they don't want to see a lot. And I was like, that's what I'm going to send in. Uh, and... I just got to where I was like, oh, but if I send this in, they tell me no, it just break me. I can't do it. So uh, I had that ready. But this was a little different because I said, well, you know what? I'm going to do what I want. And if people like it, it'll be OK. And if they don't like it, at least I like it. And I think that's the big change. You need to do stuff that you like and not with your style, with uh, whatever you're producing. Because then in the end, if no one likes it and you're in a little party by yourself, at least you're enjoying it. Uh, if you're doing something for someone else and you're like, man, you know, I, no one's going to like this or whatever, it, you know. But that that's the thing. I, I think um, I just I gave it one more shot and uh, and it's happening for me. I, I don't know. Can't explain it. But I think uh, I'm, I'm just very happy and I'm, I'm happy everybody's enjoying it. So. Well, Mark, man, thank you for your time, man. I'm going to get off here and let uh, somebody else, and I guess I'll just go, uh, roll tide, baby, roll tide. Oh, yeah, roll tide, Rick. <laughs> there you go. Be good, Mark. Take care, man. Thanks, Rick. Let's appreciate your questions. What's going on, She Spawn? Mark, thank you for being here tonight and talking to us. I guess you can tell where I'm from. <laughs> It's from Roll the Tide. Oh, there you go. Roll Tide. <laughs> I got so many gamma people in here. <laughs> yeah. Where's um, that? I, I, you were talking about the, the cards. Uh, I, I think I got a new idea for you, a, a series you could do. You know how every, everybody has their local legendary creature? You know, for instance, here in Huntsville, Alabama, we have the Alabama white thing that uh, roams Jones Valley in the caves of Jones Valley here. You, you're from Huntsville, Alabama, she spawn. That's where I'm from. Uh, really? Really? The Rocket you know, City? Yeah. Your Rocket City. You got the, the deep comics and collectibles there. You got... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, That's where I'm at, man. I'm going to be at the deep uh, signing some spawn comics in, uh, in March. That's awesome, man. I'll have to go out there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm uh, in Huntsville, Alabama right now. It's actually where I stay on the weekends. I have a condo down here in Jones Valley. Um, and then I live right across the state line in Tennessee. Oh, okay. So, but uh, anyway, uh, I don't know. Then you might have heard of the Alabama white thing. I don't know. I have to look that up. I don't think of. I know a bunch of the legends around here. You know the what is it? The the Dead Kid Cemetery or something. Oh yeah. I, I, I visited the Dead Kid Cemetery like a. Uh, I guess it's been a year ago now. But uh, that's a creepy place, man. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I I thought about doing uh, uh, ones like you're talking about because a lot of people write me and they say, hey. Um, I want to see uh, more, you know, more of those folklore myths, uh, local and local legends. Um, let's see, there was a, uh, oh, what was it? The Spring Hill Jack I just did, because people have been asking for that for like two years. 
Uh, I did Bloody Bones. Um, now, those are more widespread, not more local legends, but uh, I grew up hearing Bloody Bones all the time. But yeah, um, I do I do want to do more of those um, in ones based on, you know, where you already got it in your head, you know, oh, I kind of know what that looks like and, and me giving a concept of it. So I will probably uh, do more of those, uh, but that's actually a good idea. I could actually do them based on the states, you know, and say this is from Georgia and this is from Mississippi. And yeah, man. Whole yeah, series of cards. Idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Appreciate well, you coming. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get up up here and uh, say Roll Tide. <laughs> roll Tide. Oh, oh yes. and also Go Scorched. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, she's fun. I appreciate you coming up. Okay, bye, man. Have a good night, man. Dr. Adam, what's going on, man? Oh, Welcome crap. to the stage. Hey, what's going on? Duncan, I'm to do. Hey, Adam, you got a question for Mark? I see you just muted up. Uh, go ahead and unmute at any point in time and ask your question. But Mark, I guess I'll give you a little context. We have a uh, two teams in this Discord: Gunslingers and Scorched. Uh, yeah. It gets pretty competitive. Hey, can you hear me now? Wow. Yeah, I'm clear. Okay. okay. We oh, can hear. Oh, where's, where's where I can? This where I can talk on it. We can hear you. Can hey, you can hear you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to ask a question on what Mark's got going on now. Um, well, uh, spine co covers will come out in March. Um, let's see. Um, what else I got? I'm working on a trading card series for this year. Um, what I, I, I need to talk to, uh, some people. I think we're, I'm going to do some more spawn stuff this year. Hopefully. Um, I got to talk to them about that. Uh, and then I'm also working on a, uh, with my monsters in it, a monsters comic book, or it'll be a graphic novel, something like that. But I've got maybe, maybe 10, 20 pages of that done. I'm not sure. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, but, uh, but like I said, the card set will be out this year. So it'll be, uh, it'll be called Mark Spears monster series two, um, because a lot of people like that series one, and it'll have a complete set in every box and all that kind of stuff. But that'll be toward the end of the year. Uh, but I'm getting all the artwork of that done now. Um, but um, I think that's it uh, that I got going on. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Are you welcome? Appreciate you coming up, Adam, and asking that question. Uh, no problem. We got a question from the audience, BRN. He asks, Mark, would you consider maybe creating an action figure line based off your Halloween edition monster cards? Can't wait for your next trading card set. Um, they, let's see. Well, uh, we're looking at doing some action figures uh, based on, yep, on the monsters. I think it was going to be... My Frankenstein, Wolfman, and maybe Dracula. I can't believe I can't remember if it's all three of those. But um, I'm I'm talking to someone about doing a, like a Kickstarter, and we would do something like that. I don't know if people want retro, you know, like the Super Seven line, or if they want something else like more articulate and more, you know, um, realistic. Uh, so I'll probably put a poll out there and, and find out about that. But uh, and those do take about a year. Um, so to, to get done. So, um, but we're, I have talked to some people about doing that, uh, doing a Kickstarter this year about that. Um, but if, uh, Todd McFarlane wants to do them, I would not be opposed, uh, <laughs> if he wants to do some of those. So, uh, but we'll see, but yeah, I did definitely want to get some of my, uh, concepts out there of, uh, the monsters. People really want to figure of it and uh that's another space I, i'm not in yet so i'd like to get get into the action figure space yeah that would be awesome uh tunnel rat asks mark have you tried or heard of any asian monsters or ghosts um no i did um i think in the first series i did a few just like um i forget like the white-haired witch or something like that but 
Uh, no, I, I might have to research some of that uh, so people would recognize maybe the names um, and do some. Um, but no, I haven't. Uh, but yeah, I need to uh, come up with probably about 20 more monsters for this next set, so I might do that. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he's throwing out suggestions. Search the Pontianac. Pontianac. I don't know what that is. I'm going to search it up, too. You're getting get all sorts of suggestions tonight. I know, man. I'm, I might have to give y'all some, uh, some royalties. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll definitely have to have you back on sometime so you can keep us updated on all the cool stuff you got going on. Ooh, yeah, sure thing. About, I'm excited to see about these uh, season two. Oh, it's an Asian vampire. Interesting. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. I love vampires, so that would that would work. Yeah, that's that sounds like a monster. An Asian vampire. I didn't even know there's a difference. Uncultured. Uh we're coming up towards the hour here. If anyone else in the audience has questions for our guest, uh raise your hand, type them out in chat. We don't want to take too much of his time at it. We appreciate you coming out. Actually, there was a question from somebody. He's curious if you own any NFTs. No, um, I don't own any. Uh, like I said, I did try to do back in maybe a year or two ago. I tried to to mint one then, and I, I got confused on the wallet and uh, and where you know because there's different different marketplaces and stuff. Um, so, but no, I, I haven't. Done it's all difficult, and yeah, it's. There's, it's definitely a new space, and you want to be careful about how you enter it. And minting can be tedious and frustrating sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I'll ask uh, a question because I'm curious. Do you have any other mediums? I know you started off with uh, physical art, and then you did digital art, and your painting, your style is always about paint. Do, do you, uh, you know, pick up the paintbrush every once in a while, or do you have any other mediums besides digital art? You work with? Last time I picked up a paintbrush, uh, I, I I did. I, I studied that. I uh, was well, teaching myself. I'm self-taught um, with everything: the digital art, regular art, and painting. But uh, I picked up a paintbrush. I was trying to get this job at one time. Uh, this is I don't know, 2011 or 12, and they were teaching this paint class where you would take like your your date or something. And you would go there and uh, drink wine and paint like on a Friday night. And you would paint like a tree. Uh, and they would, um, it's very basic stuff, you know, it's like a little art class, but it's fun. And you can have a painting to take home that night. Well, I remember I, I painted some stuff up to, to take to them to show them like, hey, I'm I do this pretty good, and uh, I didn't get the job. <laughs> so I haven't, because uh, I, I hate paint because of um, how long it takes to dry, and uh, I just, I, I can't stand it. So I've tried oil. I've tried um, oil is the worst because it takes forever. It doesn't really ever dry. And then there's uh, um, acrylics. I would do a lot of acrylics, and uh but yeah, I I haven't. So that's probably 10, 13 years since I actually painted uh, with a real brush. So yeah, I bet going from digital back to painting is probably <laughs> it's like, it would oh. be frustrating. Yeah, because you want to sit there and remove that layer and you can't do it, you know, and uh, or change the color. I use uh, replace color a lot, and I notice sometimes I, I'll I'll have a vision for what I'm trying to do. Uh, and then I'll change the color at the very end. At the last minute, I'll be like, you know what? This actually looks better on this, and uh, and I'll change it. So that happens sometimes, little happy accidents, like uh, Bob Ross would say. So um, the regular, traditional, you know, that's tough. You know, you got those mistakes, and you, you can't really change it, change it like that. Yeah. I just have a, yeah, another quick question. I'm curious. I know sometimes you get so caught up in creating your own stuff, but do you follow any like other artists or any up and coming artists that you're looking at or maybe keep up to with the, some comics or is there just any media that you keep up with rather than just constantly creating? Um, not, not really. I, I think that's what happens is, uh, 
you, you become, I mean, there's where I, I just want to welcome everyone to tonight's Odd Key Cafe. We got a very special guest. He's the Rondo Hatton Horror Award Artist of the Year. He's worked with Marvel, DC Comics, Upper Deck, Image, Warner Bros, Paramount, the list goes on. And he's the creator of Mark Spears Monsters. Mark, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming on. We like to keep this a little community formatted like Q&A. So at any point in time, anybody out there in the audience can come on, raise their hand, come on up and ask a question. So be thinking of those questions. But in the meantime, Mark, would you like to give maybe a, a general introduction and tell the audience a little bit about yourself for those of you of them that may not know you? Um, let's see. Well, I guess you kind of nailed everything for me <laughs> by saying everything there. Um, basically, um, I'm from Alabama, um, artist, uh, let's see, I have, uh, I like monsters a lot, superheroes, uh, I've been doing this for about, uh, 20, 22 years, 23 years now, um, that's about it that I can think of, um, <laughs> 22 years, fan of monsters from Alabama. Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm definitely going through all your Instagram and your, your horror art's pretty immaculate. So definitely well-deserved uh, award. Oh, thank um, you. And af af absolutely anybody out in the audience, go ahead and feel free to raise your hand. Come on up. I know I saw a few hands go up and down. Raul, come on up. What's going on, man? Hello, uh... I really admire your work and um, how you give it a surrealistic, surreal thoughts, not only in the colors, but also the composition is great. I want to be a comic book artist. Um, and I want to ask you which were which, which artists were are your inspiration? to create such a unite style. If you didn't get that, I think yeah, he asked your, your inspiration on what uh, makes you create such unique art. Like, do you have any inspirations? Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, my style is a little different now than it was when I started. Um, basically, I was doing, you know, just your pencil ink uh, colors. Uh, but, you know, so I was your normal, I guess, comic book artist kind of guy. So um, I did that. My first work that got published was um, Image Comics in 2001, uh, Ultiman. Uh, Ultiman number one, I think it was a special or something. So, uh, And you can see that was just, you know, my regular pencils back then doing that. Um, and then... I went a different uh, route to where I uh, started doing concept art after that uh, a few years later um, for like Batman stuff, uh, figurines, statues, then Marvel stuff. I started doing a, uh, there's a whole line of Marvel statues out there with my name on them that they based on my artwork. Um, so I was doing those kind of things and changing my style up a little bit because they would say, hey, we want you to color this. And I was like, uh, you know, I can color with Copics and markers, but I, I couldn't color digitally at all at that time. So I started doing, you know, playing around with that more. Um, basically, uh, I, I started evolving into the style that I have because I, I just realized so many people liked it better than my regular penciled uh, penciled and ink stuff. Um, and then I started studying, um, painters, uh, like, uh, Basil Gogos. He did all the famous monster paintings, uh, the covers. Um, and he works with a lot of, a lot of color. I mean, uh, I'm just a, basically a small portion of like the color of what he does. Um, and then, uh, I started, you know, like Alex Ross, love his stuff. Uh, but I wanted to make my stuff a little bit more, uh, I felt like it, it was too stagnant, uh, like a lot of uh, Ross's work. So I wanted to make it more a blend of the two, of like a painting, but like 
what you get with the pencil dart. So I kind of try to merge the two. And then I like color. So I said, I'm going to splash a lot of color on this stuff. And it's a weird mixture and it comes out. That's the Mark Spears style now. People go, hey, I, I can recognize your work without your name on it. So it's just, it evolves over time. Like I said, I've done this 20 something years and uh, it, it just changes. Um, but my like for inspiration of my artwork, uh, Todd McFarland was the biggest inspiration at the beginning of uh, my uh, drawing um, part. And like I said later on, you know, you just start picking up stuff. You become a mutt. You start picking up things here and there, and it just meshes. So I might look at this painter like Norman Rockwell. I love his stuff and. You start mixing all that, and it just you start spewing it out together for some reason. It's just, it's just the way it goes. But thank you for answering my, my question. Uh, thanks, all of you say is so important for me, and thanks for. Oh, you're you're welcome, and uh, keep if you're trying if you if you're not there yet, keep trying because it took me a long time. It's a it's a long road, but you can get there. Uh, I like I said, I've been you know it hasn't been all roses since uh, tw let's say 2001 when my first stuff came out. It was I got so many rejection letters. Uh, you can hear uh, Todd's story how he'll tell you you know he got hundreds of rejection letters. I did the same thing. I got so many rejection letters, people telling me I'll never make it. Uh, I had Marvel call me on the phone to tell me, you're one of the worst artists we've ever seen. Never submit to us again. And and uh, and people were like, I've never heard them calling people to tell them that. And uh, so you just, you got to have a thick skin. You've got to just keep at it and, uh, and you'll, you'll eventually get it. You're, you're going to get better. The, the more practice you do, you get better. And, uh, uh, you can do things two years from now that you can't do now. It's just, that's what happens. So just keep at it and, and you'll get there. Marvel actually called you to say that. That seems pretty unreal. Marvel, yeah, man, it's a it's it's a sad story, but uh, you know I can look it back and laugh now. But uh, it was let's see, I was uh, I don't know about eighteen, nineteen, and I had just sent in you know so many submissions to Image Comics, to Marvel Comics, DC Comics. I've been doing that because I follow the Todd McFarlane method. <laughs> if you watch Todd, he'll tell you, hey, you know, send them out till they get tired of you, right? So I was sending all those things out. And and I would get some feedback from some of them. Uh, you know, some of the editors, like there was Chris Duffy at that time was at DC Comics. I think now he's out of the comic industry. He was doing something with Nickelodeon. But he was a great guy. He wrote me back every single time, would send me pages of other artists' pencils and say, hey, study this. And he would circle things. He was just such a nice person. But there's also the total opposite of that. Some of the editors were like, they would write on them like, uh, never send me anything else again. And, you know, in pen. Well, you know, I would keep at it, though. I was thinking, well, but there's just got to be one person who will, will accept it. And uh, I just got home from uh, working a retail store one day. And my dad tells me, hey, somebody called you uh, um, for Marvel Comics. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is it. This is this is what I've been waiting on, you know, all my life. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get something here. So I go and I look at the message, and it's the editor of Hulk. And I'm like, this is you know, that's like one of my favorite. This is a dream come true. I'm I'm so excited. Um, and then uh, I called them back immediately. You know, uh, the offices were closed for the day. I got a recording said, call back tomorrow, you know, 8 a.m., they opened up or something. So I had to sleep that night, and I was sitting there going, oh, man, what, you know, what's this going to be? You know, I'm going to get to draw the Hulk. I can't believe it. Uh, this is going to be so exciting. So I barely could sleep. It's like Christmas the next day, you know. So I, I'm, I'm up. I, I call them immediately at 8 o'clock. And it was actually, for some reason, 
it wasn't it wasn't actually the person that it said it was when they called. They just called from that office. And it was actually uh, John Lewandowski, the submissions editor from for Marvel. Um, but he was using the office of uh, the Hulk editor at that time or something. So he gets on the phone and he starts telling me, he goes, look, Mark, I've got like six submissions from you in the last six months and I'm tired of it. Uh, he goes, look, your, your stuff is no good. He goes, you're, you're like 19 years old. I got 16 year olds that can draw so much better than you sending me stuff. Um, and he was, he just went on to tell me my anatomy sucks. My, uh, my storytelling's no good. Um, he said, I uh, quit drawing, <laughs> quit drawing in that McFarlane style. It sucks, you know, and all this stuff. And, uh, cause you know, that's, that's how I would draw at that time. And he was just like, this is no good. This is no good. And all this. And he goes, look, I, I just, you need to give this up. You need to go do something else for your career. You'll never get into the comic industry. And, uh, and then at the very end, though, and he could tell that he kind of shocked me. Uh, I'm like, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, at the very end, he goes, listen, wait four months or something and then send something in again. And I was like, OK, thank you. And I never sent nothing in to him ever again but because it just it shocked me too much. But I thought everybody at that time, that's what they did. But I had told that story uh, like a year later to other guys who were trying to break in the industry. And they said, you got a phone call? And I was like, yeah. And they, they were like, that's, that's just strange. He must have thought enough to call you because none, none of my friends had got a phone call at that time. So um, I'd still, I did send some more stuff in a couple of years later. Um, and not to him, though. And when I did, when, my, uh, when I won the Rondo Award, I looked him up. Uh, he had passed away. I was going to tell him, hey, you know, I finally did make it, you know, just let him know. But uh, sadly, uh, he had passed away. He, he got out of comics and was doing something else and, and passed away. So I couldn't couldn't uh, reconnect with him. Do you think if it was the uh, editor that picked up instead of the submissions art, uh, officer, there would have been something that conversation would have gone differently? I, I don't know. Looking back now. My stuff was really bad at that time. I mean, that, that's the way I, I've heard other people say it, too, is you think you're you're ready, but really you're not. But uh, And some people do get picked before they're ready, but they get molded and, and everything to where their, their stuff looks better, uh, and they get that, you know, uh, apprenticeship basically and, and then get there w within a shorter amount of time but um, I don't know my stuff was pretty bad at that time uh, what's what's interesting is let's see that was probably 96 and in within three years though I did get uh, I got hired to do that image uh, comic for Ultiman because they hired me in 99 and it didn't come out to 2001 for some reason. It's, you know, it was, you know, very cheap budget. So they probably didn't have enough money to publish it right then. And they waited two years. But um, that, uh, so I was, you know, published basically within three years of that. Um, and it, it made me work harder. Uh, you tell me, no, I'm going to, you know, figure out a way to do it anyways. So, um and then, you know, that's basically, uh, I, but it did make me a little gun shot to sending things in because I did it so much. And then I was like, wow, I'm going to tick these people off, you know, if I, if I keep doing this. But I was like, you know, but somebody out there has got to hire me for something. Um, but what the, my next big thing after I did that uh, was in 2006. So it's been about five years later. Still nothing going on after I did the Ultiman. I, I was doing uh, other kind of work. And uh, out of the blue, I was checking my spam folder uh, for something. I think like a bill or something like that. And there was a message in my spam folder about a week old. It was uh, this uh, lady uh, was saying, hey, we saw your artwork online. And we have the license to do some Marvel products. And we um, 
they gave us a whole list of artists we can use from Marvel, but we don't like any of it. But we liked your stuff. And we would love for you to uh, come on board and do this stuff with us. This is the Marvel statues. And at first I thought it was fake. And then I was like, I got to write these people back. What if they already picked another artist? And they hadn't. They were waiting on me. But I'm so happy I looked at my spam folder. Um, or that that would have went away. I wouldn't have got that. Um, and that that helped a lot because that, that's when my career really started going a little bit in the right direction because in 2006 when I got that, um, that led to uh, DC's uh, doing uh, Batman. 